Hello students, how are you all? Welcome to One Page Biology. In today's video, I will be discussing another very important topic which is part of 11th Standard Biology. The name of the chapter is Photosynthesis in Higher Plants. So in today's video, I will be discussing a topic which is called as Light Reaction of Photosynthesis which includes two basic parts that is nothing but cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation or we can also call it as cyclic as well as non-cyclic pathway. So dear students, are you all ready for this particular topic? Let's begin with the video. Now dear students, we all know that photosynthesis is a very important process which occurs in green plants. And by photosynthesis, the green plants utilize carbon dioxide and water and in the presence of sunlight, they form something called as glucose. At the same time, oxygen is released as a byproduct. So the equation of photosynthesis is basically 6CO2 plus 6H2 in the presence of sunlight, it forms C6H12O6 plus 6H2O plus 6O2, which is nothing but oxygen which is released out. So dear students, in today's video, we are going to understand that how exactly the green plants use sunlight and by making use of sunlight, what exactly are they going to form? Now dear students, as we said that green plants use sunlight and by making use of sunlight, they form something called as glucose. But dear students, how are they able to absorb the sunlight? So inside the green plants, in certain parts like the leaves as well as the stem, there are some cells which are called as the mesophyll cells. And inside these cells, there are special kind of organelles which are called as chloroplast organelles. So yes, dear students, these chloroplast organelles are extremely important because inside these chloroplast organelles, there are nothing but the photosynthetic pigments which help in the absorption of sunlight. Now, dear students, as we just said that inside the leaf, there are cells which are called as mesophyll cells. And inside the mesophyll cells, there are organelles which are called as chloroplasts. So as you can see in this particular picture that the organelle is a chloroplast, which is a lens shaped organelle. Inside the chloroplast, there are many, many disc-like structures, which are called as thylakoids. A single disc-like structure is called as a thylakoid and a group of thylakoids is called as a granum and many many granums are called as grana. So dear students, inside the thylakoid there are photosynthetic pigments present which help in the absorption of sunlight. So dear students, basically the photosynthetic pigments which are present inside the granum, they help in the absorption of sunlight and help in the formation of energy which is in the form of ATP. And by making use of this particular energy, the green plants make their own food which is nothing but glucose. So the process of formation of glucose is part of something called as dark reaction. So dear students, in a way that light reaction helps the dark reaction or we can say that dark reaction is dependent on the light reaction. Now dear students, as we said that the photosynthetic pigments which are present inside the thylakoids help in the absorption of sunlight. But remember dear students, there are many many of these photosynthetic pigments inside the granum as well as in the outside part of the granum which is called as stroma. So basically what happens is a group of photosynthetic pigments form a complex which is called as photosystem. So essentially there are two photosystems which help in the light reaction of photosynthesis. It is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Both the photosystems comprise of different types of photosynthetic pigments like chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, carotenoid as well as xanthophylls. And these photosynthetic pigments are mainly playing a role in absorption of sunlight and in the formation of energy in the form of ATP. Now dear students, the light reaction comprises of two major pathways. One is called as cyclic photophosphorylation and the other is called as non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Let us understand what is cyclic photophosphorylation. Now dear students, in cyclic photophosphorylation, there is only a single photosystem which is involved, which is nothing but photosystem 1. Now remember that in photosystem 1, the sunlight is absorbed by chlorophyll A pigment, which is the main photosynthetic pigment and is also the reaction center. Now chlorophyll A pigment of photosystem 1 essentially absorbs the sunlight at 700 nanometers. Now once the sunlight falls on the chlorophyll A pigment, which is part of photosystem 1, the chlorophyll A pigment of photosystem 1 will get excited. Once it gets excited, it will emit the electrons and these electrons will be carried by the different electron carriers. Now as soon as the chlorophyll A gets excited inside the PS1, it will emit the electron. This electron is carried by different set of electron carriers. Now the first electron carrier is basically a primary electron carrier which is often referred as the ferredoxin reducing substance. The FRS will further send the electron to ferredoxin which will further send it to something called as plastoquinone. Plastoquinone will send it to cytochrome 
B6, cytochrome B6 will send it to plastocyanin and from plastocyanin dear students the electron comes back to the original photosystem. Since the electron is returning back to the photosystem, dear students, this particular pathway is called a cyclic pathway. Now what is the advantage of this particular pathway? Whenever the electrons are going from plastoquinone to cytochrome B6, the energy is getting released which is in the form of ATP. So dear students, the major advantage of cyclic photophosphorylation in green plants is nothing but the formation of ATP. Now dear students, let's talk about the second type of photophosphorylation which is non-cyclic photophosphorylation. In non-cyclic photophosphorylation, there is another photosystem which is involved which is called as PS2. Now in case of PS2 dear students, the chlorophyll A pigment which is the main photosynthetic pigment absorbs the sunlight at 680 nanometers. So remember the difference between PS1 and PS2 because in PS1 the chlorophyll A absorbs the sunlight at 700 nanometers whereas in case of PS2 chlorophyll A absorbs the sunlight at 680 nanometers. Now once the sunlight falls on the chlorophyll A of photosystem 2 it will get excited and again the electrons are emitted. Now this time dear students the electrons will be accepted by a primary acceptor which is called as pheophytin. Now pheophytin further will send the electrons to plastoquinone. Plastoquinone will further send it to cytochrome complex and cytochrome complex will further send it to plastocyanine. Now dear students please remember from here the electron does not return back to PS2 unlike in case of cyclic photophosphorylation. That means, dear students, in case of non-cyclic photophosphorylation, there are two photosystems involved. One is PS2 and the other is PS1. Now the electrons are going to PS1 from plastocyanin. Once the electrons go to the PS1, again the PS1 is going to get excited in the presence of light. And as the PS1 gets excited, again the chlorophyll A is going to emit the electron. The electron will be accepted by the primary acceptor, which is the FRS that is nothing but the ferredoxin reducing substance. The FRS will further send the electron to ferredoxin. Ferredoxin will further send the electron to the final electron carrier in case of non-cyclic photophosphorylation which is nothing but NADP. Now NADP dear students is the final electron acceptor in case of non-cyclic photophosphorylation. As soon as the NADP accepts the electron it will get reduced. Now dear students we can see that the PS2 is still unstable because the electrons which were released from PS2 in the beginning have not returned back to the PS2. So here a very important step is going to take place which is nothing but photolysis of water. Now what is photolysis? It is nothing but splitting of water in the presence of sunlight. So as soon as the water gets split up, it splits into H plus ions and oxygen is also formed. So dear students, the water splits to form protons plus electrons and oxygen is released. These electrons which are released during photolysis are going to get accepted by the PS2 and that's how dear students the PS2 comes back to its normal state or the ground state. So what exactly is the advantage of non-cyclic photophosphorylation? The advantage of non-cyclic photophosphorylation is dear students one there is formation of NADPH2. So if you remember dear students that NADP was the final electron acceptor in case of non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So NADP is getting reduced to NADPH2 by accepting the protons of the water which had split up during photolysis. So dear students, the advantage of non-cyclic photophosphorylation is one is the formation of NADPH2, second the formation of oxygen which is released which can be used by all the living organisms on this particular planet. So dear students, if you compare the cyclic and the non-cyclic photophosphorylation, what are the differences? The major difference is in cyclic photophosphorylation, there was only a single photosystem which was involved, which was nothing but PS1. But in case of non-cyclic, both PS1 and PS2 were involved. Another point of difference was, in case of cyclic, there was only formation of ATP. But in case of non-cyclic photophosphorylation, dear students, there was formation of NADPH2 as well as there was formation of oxygen which is released by the green plants. Another very important difference between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation was in case of cyclic, the electrons travel back to the photosystem. Whereas in case of non-cyclic, the electrons which were released from the PS2 do not enter back into the PS2. So dear students, I hope you are very much clear with the difference between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Now dear students, finally coming to the conclusion of this particular video, as we have now understood the light reaction and in light reaction we have understood both cyclic as well as non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So now we know that by light reaction, the green plants majorly form energy which is in the form of ATP, also they form NADPH2. 
at the same time the advantage of light reaction is also the oxygen is released remember that both the atp as well as the nadph2 are going to be used up by the dark reaction what is dark reaction dark reaction is mainly the formation of glucose so in other words dear students the dark reaction is dependent on the light reaction because without using the atp and nadph2 the dark reaction cannot take place at the same time dear students the dark reaction is going to form adp and nadp which will be ultimately used up by the light reaction so in a way that light reaction and dark reaction are actually interdependent so dear students if you have understood the concept of light reaction please like share and subscribe to one page biology i'll be seeing you all in the next video with some another biology related topic dear students take care of yourself thank you so much bye bye